two kitties that we went and shot this weekend so we could film a video of skinning the cats to make a video for you guys to learn how to skin. We shot the small one in the front on Friday morning and the second one in the back on Saturday afternoon. And without the use of any dogs, we did a stock and call method. Are we ready? Yep. First step for a life-size mountain lion, we're going to skin this cat. Today, for a life-size mount, we're going to take measurements. The first measurement we're going to do is a total length measurement from the nose to the base of the tail. We have 48 inches. We're going to take a chest circumference measurement. 24 and a half. I'm going to record those two measurements. We're going to take a belly measurement at the biggest point of the belly. 27. We're going to do a nose to eye measurement. We have about three inches. And the nose of the back of the skull is going to be nine inches. Now, for my life size mounts, we do a ventral incision compared to the dorsal incision, especially on mountain lines due to the shortness of the hair. But for a life size mountain line, we're going to make that incision start right at the pad, down the back of the leg to the center of the body. With a sharp knife, hopefully. We're going to do the other leg. Come to the same spot in the center of the body. That's the front legs cut open. Back legs, we're going to follow the line basically. The two color markings differ. We're going to start right in the pad at the same. Down the center of the pad. Right down over the rear part of the hock. Right down to the anus. Now this is a female cat, so we do not have to worry about the testicles at this point. And repeat that process on the second leg, hind leg. Now if you had some help to hold that apart, it would make this job easier. Maybe. Please. Yeah. Now we're going to meet from the center where we made the cut, right back through the anus. Try to be careful not to cut into the stomach pouch. If you do, you won't like it. Thank you. That's fine. We're going to start at the hock here. And just start slowly skinning where you made the incision. Careful, carefully skin the leg open. Down towards the pad of the foot. All the way up the leg. We'll do one side at a time. Carefully work down the pad towards the toes. We'll try to flip this leg over. Do the other side of the same leg.
At this point I'm going to use a scalpel to get a little more detail down in these toe bones. Now I'm going to separate the toe bones with a sharp knife. And you can use the side cutters or if you can cut through the joints, cut them loose and we'll sever them bones, leave about three inches of toe bone in them which we will remove later. I use the side cutters to finish cutting through them. We have that leg loose. That's one rear leg. Now we'll switch around. Do one front leg. Same thing. Carefully skin it from the front shoulder down towards the pad. There's a pad on the back of the foot that we need to cut close to get off the skin through. It's connected to a tenon. Ooh, watch claws are sharp. That side of that foot down, we're going to turn it over. Now we're, we're coming to the dew claw. There's a fifth claw on the front paw. We have to be careful so we don't cut that off. Go in and find the edge of that claw. Cut through the joint. We get the front dew claw cut loose. Skin in the front leg, down the pad. Same as the rear leg, we're going to separate these toe bones. Being careful not to cut through the skin on the opposite side. Cut down through the joints.
You got a king on the house. Okay, now that we have the all four legs cut open and all the paws loose, we're going to carefully skin the rest of the hind legs down. Now, if you had a place to hang this cat by the hind legs like you would skin a deer, it would make this whole process a lot easier. I'm doing it on the table. So let those of you that can't hang it, and see how it can be done, accomplished. Skin this all the way down very carefully to the tailbone. same way very carefully at this point I'm going to start the incision on the tailbone going from the anus and at this point I'm only going to go up to 8 to 10 inches on the tailbone. I'll finish the rest of it out at a later time. Very carefully skin around those 8 to 10 inches. You could do the whole tail at this time. I prefer to wait to a later point. Could be done on the floor, out in the woods if you needed to. Done that. It's just easier to show you on the table. Always keeping pressure on the skin, pulling. All you're doing is cutting the membrane between the meat and the hide. center of the body, just to the front of the front shoulders or right on top of the front shoulders at this point. I went 
past halfway. I'm going to at this point turn the body over. Repeat the same process with the other side. Steady pressure on the hide and just cutting the membrane. At this point, when I skin this animal, I'm going to take him completely off the head without severing the head from the body, so we're going to want to open the mouth up from the outside. We're just carefully going to cut along the gum line and cut all this loose. Same with the bottom jaw. Carefully on both sides, peel her back. Complete top jaws loose. I'll take I'll cut the nose when I bring it down over the head. And we're just carefully going to keep skinning forward. Down the neck. 
side to side so you come even down the neck. This is a small cat I can throw around by myself. side down to match that, come to the earbud. If you are the taxidermist, you can take it completely down over the nose. If you're just a hunter, you're trying to take it to the taxidermist, at this point you can cut the junction of the neck off the skull and take it to your taxidermist with the skull intact. At this point I'm going to show you how to remove the skull, the hide from the skull. You find the earbud, you very carefully cut down. Finding your junction, juncture of the earbud, and sever it from the head, and very carefully skin down at that point. We will repeat that same process on the other side. The earbud, we severed away from the head. We're going to skin down and find the eyes, locate the eyes at this point. Now the eyes, we're going to stay really deep in the hide until we can locate the corner of the eye. At this point I'm going to cut the back of the jaw loose and disconnect the bottom jaw from the Hide from the bottom jaw all the way around. This way I can skin forward. I can skin to the eye from the back and the, from the bottom jaw forward. I can reach inside and I can feel my fingers right here where the eyeball is. I'll very carefully sever the eyeball, skin away from the eyeball, saving the inner lid. Completely out. 
This female is a five-year-old female. She's actually got pretty tough skin, which makes it nice for skinning. I use a powdered borax to keep my hands dry at this point. Find your earbud, be very carefully. Start separating the membrane of the ear. This is something that needs to be practiced on any animal you can find, because this is one of the hardest steps to learn in skinning of any animal. Very carefully. You are separating the cartilage of the ear butt from the hide and turning the ear inside out. And it will feel like it's impossible the first few times you do it. It's a lot of practice, a lot of patience to learn. I have a homemade steel bar, I can use screwdrivers. If I was out in the wild, I'd find a stick just to get a little leverage up in the ear. So I put a little pressure, I will keep the bar or the stick, the hide side or the ear cartilage side of the ear. And just keep working the ear down until you've actually turned this ear completely inside out. Flipping back and forth on a constant basis.
how thin they're getting at this point. I've got them split to the edge. I'm going to proceed to do the bottom jaw, which is a lot thinner skin. Very carefully, separating it right to the edge of the gum line. At this point we are going to take the toe bones, if we have them properly opened up, we can clamp them in the vise. Keeping my hand dry and putting, at this point you can put quite a bit of pressure on these. And slowly cut the membrane around. Very carefully working your way out towards the edge of the claw. And you're going to sever the last joint where the claw connects to the toe bones. That way when you mount this animal later, you will be able to refill that with clay and get a good solid joint. That is what a finished claw would look like. We will repeat that process actually 18 more times on this animal. 
before it's done. If you're out in the wild, you could use the pliers, but you would probably need someone to help you hold the pliers and put pressure on this. It's been done. It's a tough job, but it needs it needs to be done prior to salting, or it will not come off later, and it will cause problems with your finished mount. Finished completely finished front paw. The dew claw, which we removed earlier, and four claws. You would repeat the process on the other three legs. And when that's finished, and the flushing is finished, you would mark your hide in whichever fashion you mark your hides. And then we go to the salting process. Shut her down, we'll bring her to the back hips. Both them shots. I just want a bullet in it. Looks better here than running around out there yet. Mm -hmm. You say you're good, so. We'll fix it. <laughs> Put a big old bullseye on it. I don't care. Ready? It's rolling. Oh, okay. At this point, we have the height completely spread out on a flat surface for salting. I use a real fine rock salt for this process. You have to use some not some type of non-iodized salt. I probably would use more salt than I need to. You want to make sure all the edges are completely spread out. The height is stretched out, and you work the salt into all edges of the hide. Preferably with rubber gloves on. At this point, make sure the claws are all salted properly. Pads are salted. Don't miss any points because it will spoil and the hair will not hold in the tanning process. I like a lot of salt for the head. I actually take salt, put it inside the head with a little bit inside each ear. I'm going to do the throat of the cat first, bottom jaw.
That's what a properly salted hide should look like. That's a wrap. For this mountain lion today, we're going to skin this mountain lion for a rug. When you skin it for a rug, your cuts are different than a life size. The life size goes down the back side of the legs. A rug, we're going to start on the back side. When we get to this joint, we're going to cut up through the middle of the front leg to make our cap wider behind the shoulders. That was the main difference between a life size mount and a rug in the skinning process. We'll follow that. We'll cut right inside this leg. In the center of this center of the leg. Remember, if you make a purchase of a hundred dollars or more, you'll receive your choice of a dozen roses from Young and Richards or a gourmet double. Spin it. We're gonna do the other leg exactly the same. With a one of a kind gift from Gunnerson's Jewelers. Come into Gunnerson's today. At 57th and Western Sioux Falls. Cut. We're gonna cut through the inside. We're gonna match on the web at Gunnerson's.com. To where we make a cut from the other side. Back legs, we're going to follow right down this ridge where the white meets the black. Go through the paw. We're going to go right down through the anus. We're going to turn it. We're going to do the other leg exactly the same. Center. The body, we're going to start right where these incisions come on the center line of the body. Very carefully. Cut that. Be careful not to cut into the through the belly wall. It'll save you a lot of mess. about an 85-90 pound female cat shot out of Montana. There our cuts are all wide open. At this point we're going to put it up on the table. Finish the Mom, the skinning process.